It is the world's biggest drink maker with a global presence. Coca-Cola, the company logo, is probably one of the most recognized international symbols. But after decades of dominance, the company is falling behind the times, and that's apparent in the second quarter for the profit, falling 4% to $2.6 billion compared to the year earlier. Rosa Kazan has more on the iconic brand's fight to keep market share. It's the sound that's become a symbol of the American culture. An icon born 127 years ago, Coca-Cola is now the world's largest beverage maker, selling some 500 brands in over 200 countries. But success seems to have been fizzling out lately. Second quarter profit fell 4% worldwide and soda sales were hit especially hard. Sugar, sugar, I wanna make you happy. The reason, a growing awareness of the link between obesity and soda drinks, promoted by films like this one, calling on Americans to pour out their soda. And the failed attempt by New York City's Mayor Michael Bloomberg to ban the sale of large sugary drinks. Now, this is something you can find in most vending machines, classic Coke, and its lighter diet version. But this is just a fraction of Coca-Cola's products. Coke admits bad publicity and health concerns are hurting business. And it's been busy reinventing old products to offer healthy options. Caffeine-free Coke, Coke Zero, and Slimmer cans. It's even producing juices, bottled water, and protein smoothies. We've created smaller portion control sizes for our most popular drinks. Coke even began a TV ad campaign addressing obesity for the first time earlier this year. We've added the calorie content of all our beverages on the front. Food experts and lawyer Mary Beth Albright says Coke's PR blitz reminds her of a similar push by tobacco companies in the 1990s. You have cigarettes and you have sugary sodas. There are no health benefits to either. So this company has a real PR problem on its hands. How do we sell and make a huge profit off of a product that is not only not doing any good, but is potentially doing a lot of harm. Coca-Cola says too many calories of any kind are to blame for weight gain and not just soda. But it's already relying more on newer brands like sports drinks to boost sales in North America. And it's focusing on emerging markets for continued growth. We now welcome Rosa Kazan making her debut here on the Anchor Set. And Rosa, welcome to Biz Asia America and welcome to the set. Thank you, but I have to ask you, just hold on a second here because I was listening to the package. Diet sodas and sugar-free sodas, all this stuff, haven't they been around for a while? Why this recent issue with health? That's right. Well, Diet Coke was actually introduced in uh, 1982, so that seems like a long time ago, more than 20 years ago. But if you think about it, that was the first new brand to use the Coca-Cola trademark since 1886. So it took Coca-Cola more than 100 years to introduce a new product, and, and now it has something like 500 new brands, you know, and it's not just what you normally think about, you know, your, your Diet Coke, your Coke, your Fanta, your Sprite. It's things that like this, like Powerade, for example, a sports drink, which, which it only launched in 2009. It also acquired uh, Adwala, for example, which makes fruit smoothies and juices, and the Sunny Water, which is also a recent, a, a, a recent acquisition, a recent product. So it's really been an amazing expansion of products for Coca-Cola in just the last 20 years. And, you know, a large part of this is also the fact that people like, for example, the mayor of New York has been uh, discouraging, if you will, big bottles or big drinks of sugary drinks saying that it is bad for you. Consumer awareness also is up as well. But I, I do want to ask you, is there a slippery slope here? Because obviously there's some unhealthiness in, in a lot of different food groups and a lot of intake that we as humans do. Where does the government draw the line in terms of saying, hey, you should eat this because it's healthy and you should not eat this because it's not healthy? I mean, this isn't obviously smoking or alcohol we're talking about. That's right. And I mean, it is the discussion here, you know, what can you eat? What should you eat? You know, it's a growing awareness about health concerns and about the growing obesity, you know, the obesity epidemic here in the United States on the one hand, and on the other hand, a so-called nanny state, you know, the government telling you what you should eat, what you should drink, how much of it you should drink and eat. So, you know, I mentioned Michael Bloomberg, you just mentioned him now as well. And it's just recently in March, actually, the New York State Supreme Court struck down the limits that he was proposing on large sugary drinks, and it's called 
little bit, you know, capricious and arbitrary. So it's really an example of that kind of balance, you know, the, a, num the, a number of uh, scientific studies that are that do, you know, point out, do indicate that there is a link between, you know, consuming too many sugary drinks and diabetes, for example, you know, and weight gain. And on the on one hand, and on the other hand, you know, this uh, discussion about, well, how, you know, it's an individual's rights, really, oh, to We choose. haven't even touched on caffeine yet. Yeah. Uh, Rosa Kazan, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I can hear probably about 25 of our producers scream if you try to take that caffeine away from them. Thank you very much.